summer's here, and you can now get almost anything you need for your sunny days delivered with Uber Eats. What do we mean by almost? Well, you can't get a well-groomed lawn delivered, but you can get a chicken parmesan delivered. A cabana? That's a no. But a banana? That's a yes. A nice tan? Sorry. Nope. But a box fan? Happily yes. A day of sunshine? No. A box of fine wines? Yes. Uber Eats can definitely get you that. Get almost, almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Order now. Alcohol in select markets. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. Follow the marquee and come to the Monday matinee. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Everyone to the Sonic Society, the world's largest showcase of modern audio drama. This is episode 619, Leaf It Adion. I'm Jack Ward, master of terrible puns here. At last with my traveling co-host David Alt. Welcome back, David. I know you've been home a full week now, but I'm sure you're just getting caught up in your sleep. Yes, uh, from the no sleep tour. Um it was more like no sleep plane ride home. <laughs> but, oh no! Oh yes, you didn't sleep the plane ride home. I find it very difficult to sleep on planes anyway. But when they're um, oh. when their uh, chairs are that close together and that uncomfortable, it was yes. Uh, yes I I wouldn't recommend it. So are you sort of back to full? rest now after a week yep back on gmt um the number of time zone changes we had while i was uh, and trying to keep up with where i was and where where everything was in relation to me because oh, wow. we traveled uh we drove nine thousand three hundred and seventy eight miles nine thousand three nine thousand three hundred and seventy eight miles in six 19 weeks. in six weeks less than six weeks um but yes uh, 19 shows, um, two countries, because we did a show in Toronto. Yes, which I missed and out on. <laughs> I know, I know, it was a shame, but it was it was quite funny coming over the border um, because we showed our passports and the the Canadian border guard said, "Okay, off you go." <laughs> that was it. Didn't didn't even because we were thinking, "Oh no, here we are in a big black van. Uh, this is going to look terrible. She's going to want to look through absolutely everything." And it's just like, yeah, off you she go. Probably was a fan. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then on the way back through, because we came down to Niagara Falls, and decided to cross over the border there. And did you uh, do a show in Buffalo? No, we did not. We didn't. Um, it was just we we stopped off in Albany. Okay. On our way over to Boston. Nice. Uh, but we we crossed back over at Niagara Falls, so we saw. Saw the falls, and um, then we thought, oh, the, the American border guards are going to be a lot more... Tough. They're going to be a lot more scrupulous. Um, and uh, the the guy said, okay, who have you got in there? And looked at our passports and then said, yeah, okay, off you go. <laughs> I think it's because there were two visas, because uh, David and I were sitting up at, up at the front, right. so th- there were two... Two official visas, and sure. so it was quite obvious what we were doing. Yes. We, we, we weren't anything too suspicious. These are not the audio drama actors you are looking for. Exactly, yes. <laughs> A little and, Jedi mind. <laughs> yeah. And we even saw Mexico, because we... Um, really? Yeah, we drove... One of our sections was from Houston to El Paso, and of course wow. El Paso is right on the border mm-hmm. with um, Juarez... Uh, so yeah, we could see Mexico. That's amazing. From where we were, so yeah, we were all over the continent and able to see and, and at least got our eyes into three countries. That's amazing. So uh, give me a couple of quick highlights. Some of the things that you're looking back, you think were the best times. Ooh. Well, uh, the first obvious one is the Stanley Hotel. Mm. Uh, so the 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 very hotel where Stephen King uh, came up with the story of The Shining. Right. Uh, that was a brilliant show. We had 400 people there, wow. and it was just uh, it was beautiful amazing. hotel. Yeah, beautiful hotel. We we did go on a tour. Um, unfortunately, it was only a daytime tour rather than a nighttime tour, but we still. <laughs> 
got to see the outside of the infamous Room 217. Uh, we had a lovely show in uh, Brooklyn, D.C. Um, our, our D.C. show was a really, really good one. It was, wait a minute, uh, there's a Brooklyn in D.C.? A Brooklyn and D.C. Oh, okay, um, I was, gonna I was say. thinking two different shows. <laughs> yeah, there. one's in New York, I'm sure, and the other one's Washington, yeah, yeah. D.C. Okay, fair enough, good. I, I'm caught up uh, now. <laughs> and uh, let's see, what else? I mean, you uh, never know, there's an Ontario in California, so... That's very true, <laughs> Yes. Uh, so we one of the places we went to was um, Nashville, the Nashville oh, right. City Winery there in Tennessee. Cool. And they even uh, made us or yeah, stuck some labels on. But <laughs> there, we had our no sleep hallow wine. Oh, wow. And uh, people were able, the people who came to the show were able to purchase a bottle of no sleep hallow wine, oh, which wow. was quite, That's... quite fun. We were we were told slightly further around background on the tour that we could name a wine and it would be it would be done for us and and they'd get their art people to knock up the the labels and it was just, it was one of those really nice little touches for the city winery to do that so that was very cool very yeah. cool <laughs> so um, we're running out of time but i think we'll maybe uh next week we'll get a chance because i have more questions and not enough time to be able to fit them in <laughs> but it sounds like you had fun right Absolutely. It was a it was a whole load of fun and a, again a tremendous opportunity and an honor to be involved. And a bunch of new fans, I'll bet you got a chance to see. Here's hoping, yes. That was great. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> we best get on with today's feature, which comes from Austin Beach and Jeremy Hennessy. And it's an eleventh hour production show, folks, for October thirtieth, World Audio Drama Day. So without further ado, let's go to that feature. The House of Leaf and Ash. And it all begins right here. On the Sonic Society. All's well with the world again. <laughs> uh, broken Bard Studios. Class, we have some new students today. They just recently moved here to Stones Harbor. I want you all to welcome Elizabeth and Rebecca. Say hello, class. Hello! Elizabeth, would you like to tell us something about yourself? What do you like? Hello, my name is Elizabeth Putnam. I'm 10 years old. I like movies and soccer. My name is Rebecca Putnam. I'm 10 years old also. Lizzie's almost one minute older than me, and I like books and stories. Where did you move from, girls? Um, Ohio. We moved here with our mom. And what about your dad? Um gone now. Broken Bard Studios presents The House of Leaf and Ash, written by Jeremy Hennessy, an 11th hour audio production. It's gonna be late for school. In a minute, Mom. Becca's hogging the bathroom. I'm not hogging it. I'm having... Come on, Becca. I gotta brush my teeth. About time. What's wrong? I got... I got my hair stuck in my zipper. Let me see. Oh, it's a lot. Uh, I'll get the scissors. It'll be easy. We're going to be late. Now hold still. Uh, I don't know, Lizzie. Ugh, it'll be fine. It'll grow back. Lean forward. And what do you think you're doing? I got... I got my hair stuck. I hate this uniform. I was going to cut her out. Give me those. You are not going to cut your sister's hair. The, these aren't toys. I know, Mom. We're not little kids anymore. We're almost 11. I hate this uniform. Why do they make us wear it? Because they do, young lady, and it's the best school in the area, and it's just a few blocks away from our house. You can walk there. Now, let me see. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's a lot of hair. Oh, gee. Oh, I can't get this to budge. How did you even get... I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm going to cut it. But just a little, honey. Okay. I was gonna do that. Now my hair's gonna be all messed up. Would 
just a tiny bit, sweetie. It'll be fine. It'll grow back, and like, you'll never notice it. It'll be fine. Give her short hair. That way people can tell us apart. Lizzie, out. Go get some breakfast. Ugh, fine. Okay, come here, sweetie. This will be real quick. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. <laughs> does it does it look stupid? Come here, my lovely. Just a little bit more. There. Yes. <laughs> See, you can't even tell. <laughs> it looks okay, I guess. Mm. <laughs> Oh, you look beautiful. Just like your mama. <laughs> now, hurry. Gotta eat something. Okay. Thanks, Mom. Never a dull moment. <laughs> so, you're excited for school today? I am. They... Our teacher asked about Daddy yesterday. Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry. Uh, did you... Did you say anything? She didn't say anything. I said our dad died in an accident, but he loved us very much. That's what I told him, and we went and sat down. Yeah. I'm sorry, girls. The teacher wasn't supposed to ask anything about Daddy. Oh, I'm so sorry, my loves. I... It's okay, Mommy. We're strong, just like you said. Yeah, strong. Oh, I know. I know, babies. You are so strong. <laughs> Yeah, I need to remember to be as strong as you. I didn't want to say Daddy died in a fire. Oh, it's fine, honey. You, it's fine. You, you don't have to talk about that until you're ready. Okay? We have to hurry, Lizzie. We're going to be late. All right, grab your bags. I'll watch you down the street, okay? Mom, please. We're big now. We'll be fine. Wait for me, Lizzie. Wait. Wait. Hugs and kisses, huh? <laughs> oh, mm, love you. Love you, Mom. Mm, and you. Love you, Mommy. All right. Have a good day. Love you. I got my lunchbox. Come on, Lizzie. Bye, Haley. Bye, Lizzie. Is that your new friend? She wants me to play soccer. I told her I used to play at her old school back home. I told her I'm great. You are great. Wish I was great. We're basically the same person, Becca. You just have to try harder. I think I'd rather read a book. Ugh. Come on, let's go home. Go ahead, kids. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, what's that? Oh, look, Lizzie, a doll store. They look so real. They look so old, but so pretty. They have puppets. The door's open. Let's go in. What's the sign say? It says, The House of Leaf and Ash. What a strange name. Um, excuse me. Are you open? Come on, let's go in. Um... Okay. Come on! These are marionettes. I remember hearing that word at the museum. Marionettes, Lizzie. String puppets. Look at this one's dress. It's so pretty. I love her hat. <gasps> Becca, look. That one looks like Hello, girls. Welcome to my shop, the House of Leaf and Ash. My, my. Look at you. So pretty. Uh, um, hello. Hi. I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, it's fine, my dear. Here, let me help you. He's a newer one, you see. Just finished him a few weeks ago. We're sorry. He just... Reminds us of someone. Of our dad. Well, I'm sorry, dears. I'm afraid I don't know your dad. Some of these dolls and marionettes are inspired by real people, though they always want to tell the greatest tales. 
Did you... Did you make all of these? I did. Carved and sculpted with these old hands. There's so many of them. We never saw your store before. I just moved in. I moved here from Massachusetts. We just moved here too. Oh! Well, where are my manners? My name is Miss Martha. It's a pleasure to meet such lovely young ladies as you. I am Elizabeth. This is my twin sister, Rebecca. Hi, my. Such amazing young women. So full of life. Wow. Look at that one. Look at her, Lizzie. She looks like a woodland princess. Just like in my novels, The Elvish Daughters of Winterwood. <gasps> no way. Look at this one. She looks like the fire warrior on my favorite TV show. Ah, you have keen and discerning eyes, my young ladies. Those two, just like you, were sisters many years ago. They were the Wartwell sisters. They met such a terrible and tragic end. I felt the need to immortalize them forever in these beautiful marionettes. They were sisters? They were. They were the two most beautiful sisters in all of the New World, and they lived in a small forest home that wasn't too far from here. Would you like to hear their story? Oh, yes, please. Come. Sit. And here. I'll even let you hold them while I tell you the story. Really? Are you sure that's okay? <laughs> ah, of course, girls. It's my shop. Now sit and I'll tell you the tale of the Wartwell sisters, the magical witches of Hearts Grove. A long time ago, there were two sisters both stunning and beautiful, who wished to come to the new world to make a better, free life for themselves. For you see, the land they came from was constantly at war, and young ladies were forced to marry, most often those they didn't love, for nothing more than to strengthen the bond between other families and warring clans. So it wasn't unexpected when their father found them two powerful men to marry. Two barons, both very rich and strong, whose cruelty was the opposite of the purity and innocence of the sisters. A baron from the east, a cruel man, well known for being a slave trader. And the baron from the west, a large pig of a man, whose slovenly, repulsive appearance mimicked the creatures that roamed his large parcels of land, were coming in three days' time to take the young sister's hands in marriage. This would ultimately separate the two girls, perhaps for the rest of their lives. The girls protested to their father, pleading through tear-filled eyes to stop the weddings, their father refused. Angry at the girls for their protests, he locked them away in the castle for them to await the arrival of their new dreadful husbands-to-be. That's not fair. Yeah, they have to escape. You are right, young one. It wasn't fair, but <sighs> life seldom is. The sisters knew this, so they did hatch a plan to escape. I knew it. But they couldn't do it alone. They sought out ancient pure magics of the old world to help them. They borrowed the power of the winds through the trees to carry them softly out of the castle windows and over the high walls. They prayed to the stars high in the heavens to light their way to the west and they whispered to the mossy earth to cover their tracks. These magical gifts were given to them by the ancient being they worshipped, a beautiful being known as the All-Mother. The All-Mother? Who's she? Some people said she was the one who gave birth to the very world in which we live, a gift to be shared by all her children. Well, did they escape? They did. They made their way to a vessel known as the Friendship, with what little belongings they had, 
and set sail to the new world. But this story doesn't have a happy ending. What happened? Did they sink? Tell you what, my dears. It's getting late, and I'm sure your mother will worry if you delay. Hurry home now, and if you stop by tomorrow, Miss Martha will tell you the second half of this story. Oh no, it is getting late. We have to hurry home. Um, here's your doll, ma'am. Why don't you take those young ladies home with you tonight? Give them a soft bed to sleep in, and that way I will know you will come back to me tomorrow. Really? Thank you. Yes, thanks. Bye, Miss Martha. Bye. Goodbye, girls. I will see you tomorrow. Such pretty girls. <laughs> Okay, you two. Are we all washed up and ready for bed? Yes, Mom. Almost. Well, you better be in your beds, because bad girls don't get tucked in. We're not bad. I'm in. Oh, where's my doll? Oh, there she is. Don't let Mom see. Don't let Mom see what? Nothing. All right, let's go. What's under there? Way to go, stupid. I'm not stupid. Where did you get that doll? I just borrowed it. The lady at the new shop said I could. Lizzie has one, too. Becca? Ugh, fine. Here. Ah. Uh, you girls didn't steal these, did you? No. no. Girls, these are very old and uh, probably very expensive. What new shop was that? Where did you get them again? The House of Ash. It's right down the road before school. It just opened up. It was the House of Leafs, I think. It's a doll and puppet store. And she told you just to take these home, huh? She said to bring them back tomorrow. Mm. It was just for tonight. <sighs> Fine. Okay. All right, what? You know, they, they look... They look very old. So frighteningly lifelike. Oh, it gives me the creeps. <laughs> All right, in bed. Go on. Good night. Make sure, ladies, you take these back tomorrow. Got it? Yes, yes Mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. <laughs> All right. Good night, my loves. Do you want this window cracked? Yes, we like the sounds in the air outside. Okay. Good night. Did you think of a name yet? I'm going to call her Alexandra. She's royalty. I named mine Sophia. Good night, Sophia. Good night, Alexandra, and sweet dreams. them screaming. We had, we had the same bad dream. How did we have the same dream? I don't know, Becca. Girls, are you up? Yes, yes, Mom. We'll be right down. Well, hurry up. You're going to be late for school. Alexandra, she's warm. Sophia, too. Very warm. I don't hear moving. Come on. Um, we're coming, Mom. Come on, Sophia. I'll take you home. The door is closed. Hello? Miss Martha? Are you here? You brought back your dolls. Excuse me, Miss Martha? Oh my goodness! You startled me, young ladies. Sorry. We just wanted to bring your dolls back to you. Her mommy says they look old and are probably expensive. Yeah, we didn't know. Well, girls, 
They are both very old, and they are expensive, but not in any monetary way. Mana what? It means money. You're right! So smart you are! Just like Sophia was. How... how did you know? How did you do that? Okay then, what's mine? Well, let me ask her. May I see her? Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, so pretty. Just like you girls. Let me see. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Why, that's a pretty name, Miss Alexandra. How wow. did you know that? Well, she told me, dear. Of course she told me. If not her, their beautiful names would have been carried to me on the wind. Are... are you magic? Like a witch? Ha! I'm just an old woman, my dears. With time and age comes knowledge. This world is a much bigger and more fascinating place than just what you can see, you know. Most people have forgotten how to look beyond this veil. Come and sit. I will finish the story of the two sisters, if you will permit me. Sure. Okay. The two sisters, Sophia and Alexandra, had landed in America, here in the New World, and they felt they would be able to live out their days as they saw fit. Not being forced to take any hand in marriage, or being forced to live a life they did not want. The sisters sold many belongings and jewelry until they found a place to call their own. A beautiful little home in an emerald green glade, surrounded by a forest so tall that the trees looked down upon everyone as if they were giants. It sounds beautiful. And hidden, like a secret clubhouse. The All Mother blessed the young sisters with a bountiful earth, so they grew all the food they could ever need. The All Mother was good, pure and kind, and the sisters knew they had to devote their lives to her, if only to pay her back for all the good fortune she had given the sisters. They would worship the trees and the stones, as well as the moon and the heavens. On the clearest of nights, they sang such beautiful songs. Their pure tones made the stars vibrate along, shimmering wildly like a stone skipping across the pond in the setting sunlight. They kissed and caressed the breezes that blew, the same breezes that allowed the trees to dance with them, watching as the great wooden giants took those precious moments to celebrate life. It sounds magical. It sounds Perfect, but you said this story didn't have a happy ending. Oh, my lovely girls, it does not. This glade was blessed to protect the sisters. Even the trees themselves did their best to protect them, whether from a cruel and unforgiving sun in the summer or from the vicious and bitter cold in the winter. But nothing could protect them from the prying eyes and hatred of people. Did people find them? Was it their husbands-to-be? Thankfully, no. But it was just as bad. Or much worse. There are people in this world who are terrified by things they don't understand. A young boy, whose hunting trip had taken him deep into the forest, stumbled across the two sisters as they danced barren, softly beating drums, praising the day's first lights. Afraid of their songs and their behaviors, he quickly went back the way he came and told the villagers nearby about the two women he had seen in the forest. Witches! the townsfolk cried. Demons they bring upon us! they spat viciously. Devils who howl at the moon! An angry mob of ignorant people, whose crops had been meager at best that year, Blame the witches in the wood for their bad fortunes. But what did they do, Miss Martha? They weren't hurting anyone. Yeah, they just wanted to live in peace. When people believe in a thing, even if that thing is very wrong, they tend to react no longer as humans, but as ignorant, mindless beasts. With torches and weapons in hand, they made their way into the spot in the secluded glade where the young boy had first laid eyes on them. 
Once they saw the sisters singing to the moonlight, they didn't hesitate. The angry mob made their way through the trees towards their home, screaming their wild accusations. Witches! Demons! Banshees! Devils! What did the sisters do? Did they run? They were scared. They were caught by surprise. The sisters fled into their home, slamming their door shut and locking it tight. The screams of the angry villagers outside left them huddled in each other's arms, for there was nowhere else to run. They crouched in fear, praying to the All Mother. Bang! 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 The villagers pounded on the doors. The women are devils! Burn the house! Burn it down! They screamed. They set their house on fire? Not fire. What... What happened to them, Miss Martha? The fire soon took hold as the villagers outside cheered. The sisters were trapped. They cried and asked the old mother to guide their spirits. They asked her to make them a part of the land they loved so much. The flames roared around them as they screamed out. Holding each other tight, they begged the old mother to grant them swift release. <laughs> were they gone? They were, young one. By the morning, the only thing that blew through the land where the home once stood was leaves and ash. It's, it's not right. Fire killed our dad, too. He, he was a fireman. Oh, you poor dears. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. It's... It's okay. You didn't know. What happened to those awful people? The villagers? Convinced they had destroyed a supposed evil that plagued their lands, they went about their lives, as most people do. Some thrived and some died. Some had children and family lines that still live on to this day. But not the sisters. They were gone, like Dad. No, not the sisters. But that's why I made these two dolls, my dears. It was very important to remember them. I want to be like Sophia. Me too. I want to be like Alexandra. What's the All Mother like? I only know bits and pieces, really. I only have one book. It's also very old, you see. Telling stories of the All Mother. Would you like to borrow it? Yes! <laughs> This little book, my dears, is very special. It will only open for those who it finds worthy. I can't open it. Let me see. I can't either. The only way to open this book requires something very special from you both. In order to read it, you must both prick your fingers and trace the shape on the cover. Do you mean blood? Like prick with the thumbtack? That's one way. The All Mother only opens her books to those willing to show they're ready to read it. Um, I don't know. I'll do it. I'm not scared. It's getting late, girls. Take the book home if you want. You know how to open it. If not, just bring it back to me tomorrow. Also, take this. He reminds you of your dad. It's my way of saying sorry. The doll. Well, oh, okay, but our mom said... Hurry, Becca. Mom will be home soon. We have to go. Bye, Alexandra and Sophia. Bye, Miss Martha. Bye. Goodbye, sweet girls. I'll see you soon. Look at this. Honestly, you girls, you make such a mess. Hmm? Clean up after yourselves. Did you return those dolls, like I told you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Miss Martha won't care if we visit them. She made them to remember two ladies who died a really long time ago in a fire. Yeah, it was a sad story, like Dad's. Did this Miss Martha tell you the story? She did. Uh-huh. 
I don't like strangers telling you these morbid stories. This, well, that's the the last thing you girls needed to hear. But mom, she said no excuses, right? No hanging out there anymore, girls. But no buts. Come on, get in a bed. Okay, Ugh. fine. What? What? What is? What is this? She gave him to us. She said it was to apologize for dad. It looks like him, doesn't it, mom? I. I. <laughs> How, how did the... she make stalls to remember people? Maybe she knew Dad or saw him in the paper. Well, all right, that's enough. Just get to bed now. I... This is coming with me, okay? I'll, I'll take it back myself tomorrow. Mom, I'm sorry. Let's go to bed, Becca. <laughs> Psst, Becca, Becca, what? Get the flashlight. Let's open the book. I bet there's a way for the All-Mother to protect us from fire. Maybe the sisters just didn't know how. We can figure it out. I don't know, Lizzie. Mom seemed upset. What if we learned magic to make her happy again? <sighs> Maybe. I guess. Come on, Becca. Be brave. Like Dad. Okay. Fine. Get under the blanket. Okay, do mine. Ouch! My turn. Ow! So what now? Trace the shape of the leaf on the book. Then it will open. Okay. You do it too. Lizzie! What's happening, Becca? It was really bad. And you, doll, you're so damn lifelike. Oh, James, I miss you. I'm trying. I mean, I really am. I... Oh, Christ, I need a drink. Ah! Girls? Girls? No! Oh, <gasps> What? Hold on, girls, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh my god, it's a fire. It's a fire. Back up. Lindsay. No. Oh, come on. This door. This door. Okay. I need it. Oh my Back 
girls. Where, where are you? <laughs> we're here in our glade, the forest. The All Mother gave this to us. You don't belong here, Sarah. We rise again, fed from the leaves along the forest floor. New life. <laughs> Sprung from the ashes of our home. Someday we will be tall and beautiful. My baby. Where are you? That's not a nice way to enter my shop, Sarah. It will take these old hands an awful long time to clean that. Where are they? They are mine now. They are penance. They gave themselves willingly to me. They will live in the most beautiful paradise I could ever create for them. <laughs> I don't like my name. Call me Alexandra. And I'll be Sophia. They can't harm us here. Let us play for the All-Mother. Oh, babies, please. Please come back to Mommy. <laughs> They are mine now, Sarah. The bloodline ends with them. It has taken me well over a millennia, but here it ends. But I like your girls too much to simply kill them like the others. I've given them eternal life. What are you talking about? What bloodline? Why are you doing this? They are the last ones. You are the last bloodline of a curious and ignorant pig of a young man who long ago brought about the death of two innocent girls who were mine. It's taken me a long time, but my task is almost done. A young boy, I, I don't understand. Just, just give them back to me, you foul witch. Mind your tongue, girl. Or else, I won't allow you to say goodbye. Oh, thanks for visiting, Sarah. Goodbye. <laughs> yes, goodbye. Thank you for visiting our beautiful home. Please, please, what is it you want? Do, do, do you want me? Will, will you, will you take me, take me? Just let me see them. Look around you, Sarah. Each intricate doll. Each puppet, each one a reminder of the life I took for them, for Sophia and Alexandra. My collection is almost complete. You would offer yourself to me, the last daughter of a pig boy who took everything from me. Here I had planned to let you live and suffer, carving you in effigy while you were dying from madness in an asylum, grief stricken at your loss. A husband and your daughters. Such a pity. It's so pitiful. Wretched. Let me see them. They are forever young. Right here. Two beautiful dolls forever. I am Lady Alexandra. Brave and bold. I am Sophia. Smart and cunning. Girls. Girls, you're Elizabeth and Rebecca Putnam. You... Your great ancestor, no. an ignorant and pompous pig, <laughs> led a village of angry puritanical pigs to the home of Sophia and Alexandra. They burned them as witches. They were free women. Girls! They hurt no one. The balance must be restored. Your task is done, Miss Martha. Such a joyous day. Now get out of my shop. I can just as easily throw you out. I'm not responsible for the, the sins from so long ago. The sin is in your blood. Stigma of a pig boy. Maybe so, but I, I don't know what else to do but say that. And I'm sorry. What? What did you say? I'm sorry. I, I don't know what the intentions were or, or why it happened the way it did with the, the loss of those two girls. If it's anything like the loss I'm feeling now, then I am so sorry, Miss Morgan. I'm so sorry. 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> hello, hello. I, I I can't see anything. Hello, hello. Hundreds of lives I've taken, hundreds I've ruined for those girls, and the one and only time I hear an apology is at the end of my story. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about your girls. I, I bet they were beautiful. You have no idea. Never forget this day, Sarah. Take them. Take them and go. Oh my god. Oh my god, Elizabeth Becca. Oh. Mommy. Oh. Mom. Oh god. I'm so sorry, Mom. I'm sorry, Mom. Oh. It was my fault. I was the one who wanted to open oh, no, the book. No, no, no. It was my fault, too. Oh, baby, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Listen, I'm, you're okay. You're, you're okay. I have you. I, Where did everything go? All the dolls and Miss Martha? It's all gone. I don't know, girls. But she's gone now, so... Come on. Yeah. Let's go. I don't want to be here anymore. Hey, what's that? In the corner. It's Sophia and Alexandra. There's a note, Mama. What's it say? Uh, it says, handcrafted by the House of Leaf and Ash. Unforgettable life life doll. <sighs> Come on, girls. Let's go home. The House of Leaf and Ash, a Broken Bard Studios production for the 11th Hour Audio Challenge. Written and directed by Jeremy Hennessy. Produced by Austin Beach. Starring Daniel Reese as Becca Putnam. Mary Kleemeyer as Lizzie Putnam. Sarah Golding as Sarah Putnam, Charlotte Norup as Miss Martha, Jeremy Hennessy as the teacher, Barbara Beach as the crossing guard, and Reagan Beach as Haley. Thanks for listening. And that's this week's show. Please join us next week for more 11th Hour Productions. Send us your comments at sonicsociety at gmail.com. Contact us on Twitter at at Sonic Society or at Astro Tour 2010. That's me. Check out the Facebook groups and from all of us here at the Society and the Mutual Audio Network, thank you for listening. I'm David Alt and have a wonderful day. Enjoy the morning. The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. This is an urgent message from Cypher. I'm undergoing various uh, undergoings for the evil plan. It has come to my attention that these children, these voices, have risen in a mutiny against us. This, of course, is suboptimal. They must be stopped at all costs. I think I speak for all mankind when I say 
The evil plan must continue. <laughs> yes, it must. <laughs> We have set up a trap for these kid agents, and they will be dealt with soon enough. Don't believe me. Just listen. I'm just gonna cut one of them! No, wait! Okay. Why haven't they reported in for the past two days? Two of your agents have been injured in the line of duty. Josh, are you okay? Uh, Miss, Miss, can you please step back? Say something comforting to Josh. Uh, better you than me? Many believe Wordtastic Podcast to be the greatest podcast of all time. And season two bears no exception. We'll have more action. More laughs. What is wrong with you? More drama.